Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to everyone as we begin our chapel this morning. We begin with the invocation and the reading for the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The gospel lesson for this week includes Luke chapter 16, verses 10 through 15. Jesus said, Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. Whoever is dishonest with very little will be dishonest with much. So, if you've not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you've been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No servant can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees, who loved money, heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of men, but God knows your hearts. What is highly valued among men is detestable in the sight of God. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the Gospel lesson of Luke chapter 16. Jesus says at the very end, No one can serve two masters. He'll either hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees who loved money heard him and were sneering at Jesus. And he said, you're the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of men, but God knows your hearts. Here's ends our text. Many years ago, it was the perfect time when our children were just the right age. They were just the right age, all three of them, for Bernstein Bear books. I love the Berenstein Bear books. I sense the rippling of the crowd. I look through these. We've got 30 plus of these wonders. The Berenstein Bears and too much birthday. Oh, we know how that went. The Berenstein Bears go to camp. Such excitement. Oh, and who did it? The Berenstein Bears and the missing honey. Well, they go on, they blaze trails, the trouble with grown-ups, the troubles with babysitters, remember that one. And who can forget too much vacation? Well, it goes on and on. You see, the reason I love Berenstein Bear books is I would go away on a visit, on a, on a meeting, I'd go to St. Louis for two days or something like that, and I'd come back, and in the airport, there was a bookstore that for two bucks would sell you a new Berenstein Bear book. And for two bucks, let's go high dollar. For four bucks, I'll get two. I could come back a hero. <laughs> it was fantastic. Oh, I know the children spent two days asking Holly, when is dad coming home? Is he coming home soon? But the reality is, how many is he going to bring this time? I hope he remembers what we already have, and he doesn't like last time, lamely bring us one we already have. Dad, you're home. Oh, how was your trip? said by three ravenous badgers going through my stuff. <laughs> it was all good. They love me and my stuff. I think we've got our text right there. We love him and his stuff. We love God. And we sure are glad he comes with full bags of stuff for us. And we're all still children at times, aren't we? I mean, and it's so easy. We welcome him at the start of every day. We welcome him when we think of him. And our prayers say, I am so glad you're here in my life. Even while with childlike sincerity and yet eagerness, we're going through his stuff. And we're looking for more stuff. And a little disappointed if today only brought the same old stuff that we already had yesterday, and the real thing that we were hoping he knew we were ready for and we'd grown up to, well, get, wasn't here yet. Sounds like us, doesn't it? You know, Jesus says no one can serve two masters. You can't serve God and money equally at the same time. That's just one of the illustrations, though, of God's stuff, isn't it? I mean, we say, God, I love you, and I love your stuff. It could be money. Thank you, Lord, for bringing money. Maybe for you it's money that you have. Maybe it's money that's promised because when you get out of here, you're going to have a fantastic job and the money is going to come. Thank you, Lord, for your stuff. Maybe it's not something as tangible as money. 
You love God and his stuff of how he made you. You're the stuff of God. You love the fact that he made you with your talents, with your looks, with the people that surround you and make you. We love God and his stuff. Maybe it's not now, but it's to come. It's all the promise of what the years to be will bring. It's that relationship that's going to come. It's the children. It's the travel. It's the house. It's the, ah, oh, you can see it all. We love God. But we have a challenge, don't we? In trying to make some perfect teeter-totter of absolute balance that says, and his stuff is no higher. Well, let's go back to being children again. Remember trying to teeter-totter balance with somebody? Remember thinking that we could just get it just, 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 just right, just, 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 and, and, and move, and, 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 and it never quite worked out, did it? It always sank or rose, or somebody decided to just slip off. That was never fun. And off you went. We had the same philosophy, the same thought. Maybe I can strike a perfect balance between my love of the Father and all of his stuff. But all of us know what Jesus already said. You can't do it. You cannot serve both God and equally say you love his stuff and strike a perfect balance. So what do we do? Well, can I give you a fantasy? A perfect fantasy. But you know what? It's a fantasy that you could live today. I come home from St. Louis. I fly in. I've been gone for three days. I walk in, and I've got bags full. Three kids rush up. Dad, you're home. Yes. And they start asking me things. No, no, not what you're thinking. They say, how was your trip, Dad? What did you do? How was the flight? Did you see anything new? You were going to meet your friends. And they ask me all these questions, just about me. And I ask them, how was it these days? What did you do in school? How was lunch? What did you do in FIAD? How have you been getting along? How's mom? And they tell me all this stuff. And we sit down on the couch together, and that's all we do for five, ten minutes. And without anybody looking and nobody searching, I then say, I brought something. What? I brought a new book. And I pull it out of the pack, and they come around. And one of them says the sentence I've been waiting to hear. Let's read it together. You bet. And we sit down to read the Berenstein Bears. And we read every word and every story. And we look at every picture together. And when we're done, the oldest takes it and says to the youngest, I'll read it again for you. That's a nice picture, isn't it? It doesn't always happen in families. That's asking a lot of kids of the age of the Berenstein Bears. Could be you, though, today, with Dad. He hasn't gone away, but he's waiting to be seen again. Wouldn't that be a wonderful prayer? Just a way to pass some of the minutes of this day. Father, you're here. Tell me about. Tell me about today. Tell me about what I should do. Let me tell you how yesterday went. Though I know you know it, but I know you want to hear it. Let me tell you what I'm thinking. Let me tell you what I'm worried about. And you talk to him. You just talk to him. You don't go rummaging through his packages to look for the stuff that you think he ought to or should have brought. You're just glad to be there with Dad. And if Dad brings out of his packages of today something that you've seen before, then read an old story one more time with him and be glad that you get to do it with him. And if Dad pulls out of his packages meant for today something you've never seen before, then all the better. Read the story with him. 
and you've got it. We get the dad and his stuff, but we've got it right. He brings us wonderful stuff. It's the gift that he gives. But he wants us to focus on him, and why not? He's here. He's home. He's made a home here with us, and he's welcoming us to come and sit and listen and talk. So let's spend a day with Dad. Let's spend a day with Dad. And if he brings his gifts out of his package of today, well and good. But let's spend the day with Dad. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.